Hello, my name is Emily Smith Dumont and I'm an agroforestry system scientist with the World Agroforestry Center. In this short lecture, I'm going to be presenting a case study of the parkland management in Mali and uh, looking at the opportunities and constraints associated with farmer managed natural regeneration. Parklands are, are the dominant land use systems in the West African drylands. Uh, they're usually associated with savanna type ecosystem, but they are largely anthropogenic landscapes. And basically what they are is crop fields with many scattered trees in them. Here in Tomino in Mali, in our case study, we're looking at a Sudano-Sahelian parkland. Parklands are usually crop fields with scattered trees that have been retained by farmers from the fallow cycle. And in the Sudano Sahel, they're usually dominated by edible species like the shear tree, like the locust bean, like the tamarind or the marula. They're systems that are largely based on subsistence agriculture and the main crops are millet and sorgo. They have a very small, short uh, rainy season of three months. And we know that these systems are particularly vulnerable to climate change. And, we, and there's an increasing uh, concern over the impact of climate change and increasing aridity in this part of the world on tree cover and tree diversity. And, and what this means for millions of smallholders and for their food security and poverty level. In, uh, in this project we were, we were studying villages under a project called Regreening the Sahel and which was led by a Malian NGO called Sahelico with funding from Tree Aid. And what, what they were looking at was different agroforestry techniques that could improve tree cover. And one of them is called farmer managed natural regeneration, also known as FMNR. So, what is FMNR? Well, actually, FMNR builds on the traditional practices of nurturing trees in the fallow field cycles. They really are simple and low cost field management techniques whereby farmers are encouraged to identify, to stimulate, and to protect naturally regenerating trees and shrubs in their fields or in their fallows. And the interest in that technique comes from, from uh, the recent evidence in parts of the Sahel, especially in Niger and in Burkina Faso, which have correlated the widespread adoption of FMNR practices with the recovery of tree cover and, uh, and many key ecosystem services being provided and livelihood improved. So we wanted to see how these practices could be scaled up to increase the sustainability of parkland systems in other areas. Tree cover and tree diversity in parkland is very important for securing a number of, of ecosystem services. Amongst those are key provisioning services. Most of the parkland trees are multi-purposes and they can provide food, medicine, timber, fodder, fuel wood, honey, fiber, and most importantly, they're, an, they're a source of cash income for women who produce shea butter or different liquors like from the amarula or the tamarind. So this is a very important aspect for local livelihoods. In addition, tree cover in parklands provide a number of regulating and supporting services. They help to improve soil and water quality, to regulate climate, regulate floods, and conserve biodiversity. And lastly, they have important cultural and spiritual benefits for local communities. So the decline of parkland trees has severe consequences both on the livelihoods and on the environmental conditions. As a first step to understanding the potential of FMNR in the area, we, we wanted to look at the local knowledge that farmers had of natural regeneration processes. And what we found was that there were clear regeneration problems for the large majority of the species. So out of 34 species discussed with farmers, 23 were either threatened or in decline. And amongst these trees were the most important trees for food, medicine, and income. The disruption in the, in the natural regenerations were caused by, by two important factors. One was the low or absence of seed stock, and the other one was the extremely high seedling mortality. The absence of seed stock was, was uh, caused by a continuous decrease in parent trees, a decline or an absence in fruiting. This was often because trees were excessively lopped or, or pollarded for wood or fodder, or because fruits were over-harvested. Now, high seedling mortality was mainly the result of plowing or grazing pressure 
or also from the, from the abandonment of fallows, which used to provide a favorable microenvironment for the regeneration of many of these species. On the other hand, we had a few species which were reproducing from rootstock and which were resistant to grazing and to drought, which had stable or increasing populations. However, these were usually eliminated during field preparation. And it is these species, uh, the same species, which have been uh, uh, really promoted en masse in drier parts of the Sahel and which have contributed to the success of FMNR in those areas. In terms of the challenges to the success of FMNR in this site, we, the main driver was demographic pressure and agropastoral intensification of land. Agropastoral intensification of land means more animal, more permanent cropping, more intense uh, field cultivation pr practices, and one of the major change was the increase in animal traction. So it was very difficult to protect natural, uh, regenerate, natural regeneration during plowing or weeding activities. At the same time, this increase in livestock, both because of uh, an increase in animal traction, but also because farmers were diversifying and, 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 and there was an increase in small ruminants, it was becoming extremely difficult to protect natural regeneration, either because material was expensive uh, or not available, or the fields were too far away, or because the trees were known to grow too slow to, uh, to merit such a, an expensive and laborious protection. We also had a negative perception of trees in cropland, either because uh, shading reduces crop yields or because uh, trees attract pests. So that was another challenge in, um, in, in FMNR in this site. There were also issues with social norms. So a hard-working farmer in the area needs to prepare his field by clearing all its vegetation and usually using fire, which is obviously a major constraint for natural regeneration. There were also issues with land and tree tenure. Because we were in, in, a, in, in an area with customary arrangements and most of the land is lent. So by planting trees, it was seen as making a claim to land which was not socially acceptable. There was also an issue with tree tenure because most of the valuable trees were owned by the state and farmers did not feel they had full ownership. So despite these challenges, there were still some opportunities for FMNR in the site. One of, it, one of them was the awareness of tree resource scarcity and all the associated environmental degradation that was occurring. And this was helping to change some of the social norms and the view of trees in, in fields. And this was also encouraged by new technical and also legal knowledge uh, externally supported by Sahel Eco. There were also institutional changes with the creation of a cooperative to market different, uh, different tree products. This was closely linked to the development of small-scale village enterprises to market non-timber forest products. So this was a, you know, raising farmers' interest and interest in investing in, in trees. On the other hand, if some of the species were, were threatened by, uh, by, by the agro-pastoral intensification of land, there was still an availability of seed and rootstock for many other species, including important fodder trees like the Federbia albida. There were also different innovations, which was uh, looking at, at uh, protecting natural regeneration in the life fences or in, the, or in naturally regenerating shrubs, which would mimic the fallow environment. So these were, were, were techniques that farmers were innovating and testing. As we see, the major change in that parkland was the agro-pastoral intensification of land, which was causing severe environmental challenges and disruptions in tree regeneration mechanism, especially for the, for the dominant species that were relying on sexual reproduction. So what does it mean? Well, FMNR alone is unlikely to ensure the sustainability of the parkland in terms of tree diversity and also ecosystem services delivery. So, it should be complemented by enrichment planting and also domestication of key species. And this would be very important also to look at the genetic adaptation to more arid climate. And it's also an opportunity for farmers to plant them where they want uh, in, in their fields. Because of the increase in livestock, there's a lot of potential for improving fodder, for improving fodder tree management and, and its contribution to livestock productivity. And, and for that, there's a clear need for, for additional research. There's also specific landscape niches where intervention was, was a priority. And 
One of the areas was, was the re rehabilitation of the riparian galleries. Of course, there's also policy and legislation barriers that need to be addressed to increase tenure security and these long-term tree investments in trees. There is a film available uh, on, the, on the link below where you can uh, see some of the FMNR techniques north of, um, of the of Tomino in Mopti. And also you can find more information on, uh, on re-greening the Sahel program. Thank you.